In this video, I'd like to talk about graphing sinusoidal functions. And for these example problems, we will be given some sinusoidal function, either a sine or cosine function, with these various transformations applied to it, and we will need to construct its graph. Now, the general approach to these is that it would be helpful to know the parent function for the sine and the cosine. So right here, this is the parent function, y is equal to the cosine of x. Let me put it down here. Though if we were dealing with a sine function, it would be useful to know that one. It's essentially the same curve, but everything is shifted pi over two radians. Actually, I went a little bit too quick for that. Everything is shifted pi over two radians to the right when dealing with the sine function, but it's essentially the same curve. That would be the sine function. And the main way to look at the difference between the two is that sine goes through the origin and cosine goes through at an x value of zero at its maximum point. And you could of course re-derive both of these graphs by using the unit circle and just replotting the curve for yourself. Now, knowing the parent functions is one part of approaching graphing these. The other part is to understand the general equation for a sinusoidal function and what each of the transformations actually does to it. So let me just make a little bit of room here. And the general equation for a sinusoidal function, it could be sine or cosine, is that y is equal to a multiplied by the sine or the cosine of b times x plus c and then plus d. Now we have talked about each of these letters a, b, c, and d in previous videos but we know that a is dealing with the amplitude and actually we need to be careful it's actually the absolute value of a. The negative in front will just cause a reflection vertically but that won't actually affect the amplitude here. B, this number multiplied by x, this will affect the period. And we can say that the period of this general sinusoidal function is twice pi divided by b. C causes a horizontal shift. And honestly, C is something we will look at in later videos. For now, all of these example problems for graphing these sinusoidal functions will avoid shifting this horizontally since it's a little bit complicated. But we will come back to that later. For now, it's just important to know that adding to the independent variable on the inside of the function will shift it either left or right, depending if it's positive or negative. And D, this will cause a vertical shift, but the value of D also affects the midline, the line that essentially cuts the function in half horizontally. So knowing what each of these parameters actually does will help us construct a picture of this graph. And we know for our example, we have y is minus four times by the cosine of x plus three. And from here, we can determine what a, b, c, and d are. We can see that a is negative four. b, the coefficient on x, that's just one, so the period won't change. c is zero, there will be no horizontal shifting, and the d value is three, meaning that the new midline equation would just be y is equal to three. And for graphing these, it might be helpful to start by graphing the new midline. We know that the parent function has a midline at y is equal to zero, but we will essentially be shifting all of the y values up three units. So let's find a y value of three. And I will draw a horizontal line here just to remind us that this is the midline. Again, this is y is equal to three. And notice that we can also calculate the amplitude. We take the absolute value of a or the absolute value of negative four, which is positive four. Now looking at our parent function here, we can see that the cosine goes to the point zero comma one. When x is zero, the cosine is at its highest value of one. So we can see the amplitude of the parent function is just one. Now this negative in front will cause a reflection. So that might be worth 
writing down, it will reflect vertically. Essentially, this point will move down here, will be on the opposite side of that midline. And then we're going to stretch it vertically. We're going to scale this by its amplitude, which is four. So if we were starting here, ignoring the midline first, we would first reflect it and then instead of having an amplitude of one, the amplitude would now be four. So we could count four units down, which would be right here. So if we didn't actually shift it up or down, this would be the new peak here, this amplitude, I did not draw that very well. But we can apply this same process for this shifted function. Since we do know that we had to shift everything up three units. So let's go through that again. We know that if we didn't have this reflection or this new amplitude that the cosine would have an amplitude of one and would be going through a maximum at an x value of zero. But we know that it's reflected so that instead of being up here, it would be down here. And then its amplitude is scaled by four. So instead of being an amplitude of one, it needs to be an amplitude of four, which would be one, two, three, four right here. And this will give us a good starting point for our function. Essentially, it's going to look, let's say, something like this, though we need a little bit more information to actually construct the entire picture. And if we were using the interactive grapher on the Khan Academy exercise linked to these problems, then we would have two different points and we would just need to drag them to correct spots and the rest of the function would fill in. But if we're graphing these by hand, we need to recognize first that our period for this function is the same as the parent function, it's two pi. So it's gonna have the same zeros. It's gonna have the same points, the same x values for which this function goes through its midline. So essentially we can just translate those points up to help us fill in this curve. It would go through here and here as well. And then on the other side, it would go through here and right here. Now, the other piece of information we can use is we can look at a minimum point from our parent function, which would now actually be a maximum point since we are reflecting it. And then we're gonna scale it by four more units. So we know the minimum was here, but it's reflected. So we would be here, but now we're reflected up here, that's this negative. And then we're gonna scale it so that its amplitude isn't one, it should now be four. So we are here, this is one, two, three, and four. We get another point up there. And if we want, we can look at the other minimum. It would have that same Y value as this minimum. Essentially all the minimums have the same value y values and all the maximums have the same y values meaning that if we look at this maximum it would have a y value at negative one and same for this maximum though after we shift it and then apply this negative four scaling in front it would have a maximum of negative one as well and we can see the general shape of this curve so let me draw this in very carefully and this curve, of course, is not drawn perfectly since I drew it by hand. But if you do want to check your work on these, what I recommend doing is plotting this using a computer graphing program and just making sure that the curve you plotted by hand actually matches up with the curve that you were given.